Lift Events and Experiences, known for Canada's number one cannabis conference and trade shows, is hosting a full slate of events in 2023 and expanding into the U.S., and you're invited. Lift welcomes everyone, from legacy participants to multi-state operators, to everyday folks who can enjoy and respect the plant. So join us in lifting the cannabis industry together January 12th through the 14th in Vancouver, then in Toronto in June and San Francisco in August. Visit liftevents.com for details. That's liftevents.com. It's only entertainment. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. We are here live at MJ BizCon uh, in sunny Las Vegas, two floors at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Uh, I'm here with Tim Coffey of OMI Industries. Tim, thanks for being on The Talking Hedge. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, what is OMI Industries? What do you do? We are uh, 30 years experience as worldwide leader in uh, industrial odor elimination, uh, in, in all manner of odor elimination, frankly. Um, we actually have um, our industrial side downstairs uh, exhibiting, and then um, we are represented by our consumer line uh, here as well, uh, upstairs, Can Abolish. So uh, okay. it's been a great show. Okay. Uh, first thing that pops in my mind, because I had no idea what you did before mm-hmm. you roll in, and that's we just learn with the audience as we kind of go along. But uh, I had talked to a gentleman yesterday from 420 hotels. He tells, because I've been trying to write this bill in Washington State to overturn a Class C felony on maintaining and operating a marijuana lounge. Okay. Yep. And that's a huge uh, a proponent or, or roadblock uh, along with um, you know impaired driving and, and the Clean Air Indoor Act. But apparently, the guy from 420 hotels was telling me that there was a, a change in the law that went from like six to 60 cycles per minute and then they're willing to like really bring that back as long as you're able to scrub the air Mm -hmm. so that's huge um is that something you guys are working on for like cigar lounges yeah we, we we do have a couple of relationships with um with consumption lounges and um yes we provide the odor elimination there it, it totally depends um you know some are outdoor we have one in west hollywood that i'll be visiting later this week um it, it kind of depends on where it is you know versus the neighbors and, and uh you know how nosy the neighbors can be um but absolutely um, all manner of consumption lounges cigar cannabis um you know we're on the grow side as well um with, with indoor grows especially just the way that it emits odor and um you know the neighbors of course they don't like you know, they don't like that smell typically to be in their backyard smelling that. Um, and then there's also you know, the commercial side, so you know, hotels actually, uh, rental cars, um, and then consumer for everyday smokers at home. You know, whether you know, some people like the smell of it, frankly, but typically My wife people hates are. It. Yeah, see, it, it can go either way, but typically people are considerate of others and they understand that not everyone likes it. So um, you know, odor is, is just kind of inherently a part of, uh, of the cannabis business. Yeah. Um, and so us, it's been really interesting uh, getting started the way we have. There's, a, there's an area in eastern Washington that's uh, the second largest wine manufacturing area outside of uh, Sonoma Valley. And uh, Red Mountain is really famous for their terroir and mineral content and the wine that gets produced out of that region. Mm-hmm. And they're very, very selective or, or, or territorial on their property. And cannabis is moving in. It's, uh, you know, Lake Chelan is a huge uh, resort destination. Uh, all the golfing and cannabis and is picking up and they're afraid. So there's this NIMBY thing, not in my backyard, where, oh, you're a grower, well, it must be the smell I hate. Right. So this is, 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 do you have a solution for outdoor growers who were trying to just stay open and not have regulation shut them down? Yeah, outdoor growers are a little trickier because, um, f- frankly, usually their, their odor issues are less, um, just because it's the open air. Um, and then different climates it can make it a little easier to deal with. Um, no, no, they'll deal with cows all day long yeah, in the same right, area, right. but as soon as it comes to cannabis, like whatever excuse they can get. Right, and, they, and, and you know, there's people not really operating in good faith on that, and, and they know that they simply don't want it near them. Um, no, but absolutely, I mean, every area is different. There are some, look, we work with wastewater treatment plants. Uh, we have for 30 years where, um, you know, no one does it quite like us, but there are some that if you're rural enough, um, and, and the climate, you know, the temperature's a little lower, then, then you're, they're not worrying about it the same way. And, and it's happened a lot with cannabis as well. Um, it, t- it just depends on the way it's zoned. Is it residential behind there? Is it commercial? And um, frankly, there's just some neighbors who, are, you know, put up more of a stink, pardon the pun, than others. So, um, yeah, it, it's very interesting and, and it varies greatly. No, that's, that's good news. Are you working with, um, you said you're probably going to work with Lowe's or somebody in West Hollywood. Yeah. Um, 
are, are you looking at also working with some of the folks in, in these 10 to 12 states that are working on consumption lounges? Because I'd like to work with you because it's a huge roadblock. So definitely going to get your info. Yeah. But um, is this something that you guys are looking at on the regulatory side as well in order to kind of be at that forefront oh. for the requirements? Absolutely. I, and I think with the with the grows, that, that's part of the process now. Um, municipalities put that in there that, that's part of the permit process you have no hope of getting it if you don't prove that you have effective odor mitigation in place whatever it is I mean, there's uh, carbon scrubbers kind of a, a much higher capital investment um, than, than what we offer kind of natural odor elimination but um, but you have to have something and so yeah it's, it's nice to, to be in an industry where people need they're required to have our services um, and whether it's the grow part or whether it's the consumption lounges certainly um, same things in play there and, and we're those are a little bit hard to get to get moving. Uh, the consumption lounges, um, you know, there's not a ton of them uh, if you look just nationwide, even. But uh, that's something we're really excited as that does ramp up. That we're going to be kind of the go-to guys on that, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, what What are some of the um, initial roadblocks that you foresee in the industry? People that need something, or uh, there's certain issues that you foresee. Um, we've got a couple of states that just came on board. They're not going to know really what to do. Uh, what are some of the issues that, that are kind of um, right at the forefront for you? Yeah, I think the issues for us is kind of the same as the issues for everyone else, which is, uh, you know, coming to the show maybe two, three years ago, and even last year, it felt like we were constantly new growers, constantly um, having them come to our booth. Certainly, you know, anecdotally, but it, it's fewer this year, um, just because fewer states are at that point, and I think the pain points that came out, they're starting to feel that everywhere, and it's just slowing down the process overall. There's not, you know, capital issues as well. Um, so I think it, the, the issue is simply the, um, you know, kind of slowed um, pace that that, that uh, new facilities are coming out, um, and the companies are just experiencing some of the pain points of you know, scaling uh, when, when it was kind of a gold rush to start. Um, so, so for us, that's keeping, um, you know, consistent steady drumbeat uh, of new business coming in it, it's it's slowed down a little bit just because uh, it's slowed down overall so i think that's probably the biggest concern right now okay um what what is your revenue model is it just do you sell a machine or is there a component to it like carbon that needs to be replaced um what's all involved yeah for us we, we sort of call it the juice that's our uh, our chemistry our uh, you know plant-based so it's simply plant oils and water essentially so it's it's completely um that's all natural plant-based product so that's kind of the juice that that's what we use to um you know kind of either like atomize into the air or vaporization systems so the part of it is just the product itself and the other part is the um you know putting up the system and the equipment um so so two parts of it there um, typically for us what when we can get involved on the equipment standpoint and setting up the perimeter um you know, th those are really worthwhile projects for us. When we get not only the, you know, the quote unquote juice, ecosorb juice, and we also have the, um, you know, the systems on top of it. So um, that's the ideal situation for us. It, uh, you mentioned you have a booth here this yes. year. What's the, what's the response been? Um, it seems, because it's two stories, and, and it's um, everything's clumped together, whereas before you, you're, per the person on the right or left is just random uh, booths, whereas now they've, um, organized it so everyone in the same category, all the machines, all the mm -hmm. SOPs, all the um, HR companies, they're all in this. And so it's a little awkward, I guess, yeah. to hear your competitors, you know, talking right, or whatever. Say, yeah. um, so it's a little, it's a little, it seems sparse. Like, it, I don't know, people are just going to where they want to go. So it's a little different this year. What's been your response uh, to your machines and, um, and this year's expo? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it seems like the traffic just works a little differently being in a different hall this year. And like you said, the way it's set up, um, it is interesting. We are like right next to a couple of competitors on the consumer side up here. Um, but, but frankly, we find it interesting. And um, I, I think the traffic has been pretty good, but again, it's just been different. So we typically used to have one booth for both of our uh, industri industrial side and consumer kind of together, split in half. Um, this year they had us um, you know, split them in two. We're downstairs for industrial. We're upstairs for consumer. Um, it, it's been a good show so far. It's um, I, I think yeah. It's just since it's on two levels. 
I, I would say the overall traffic seems a bit down, but I, I think the traffic that seems down is more so the, the folks that are just coming to the show, try out some samples, walk the show, learn about some different brands, kind of a, for the recreational purpose. But I think from you know the retailer side, um, the grower side, it's still been pretty strong. So it, it still worked out this year with the different format. But, There's also yeah, a we'll lot see. of people speaking, which is down a little bit. Right, yes. So when those sessions come out, that whole wave flood. of yeah, people yeah. just come in and just fill up all mm -hmm. of this. So the lull is probably because there's a really good session yeah. and then they come and just yeah, absolutely. overtake. Yeah, it's been waves for sure. But you know, we've had pretty consistent steady traffic. So we're really pleased with this. Uh, we, the last couple of years we have been too, but th this year has been strong. Um, have you been coming for a while? What's um, the difference if you have been more than one year? I've been coming every year since 2016 when it was at the Rio. Lots of changes. 10,000 people to 35,000 right. people, 1,000 booths to 1,200 booths. Uh -huh. uh, and, and it just keeps getting bigger. Um, what's, what's your experience been and what's going to be your goal or takeaway? Yeah, we just, I think this is our th I think this is our third year, and I think four years ago we came, checked out the show, kind of walked the show, um, and we said, yeah, this is the energy's great here, the crowd's great, um, really like legitimate business opportunities here for, for both of our lines. So we've been here, this is our third year. Um, yeah, I mean, for us, this is, we change shows all the time, just being on the industrial side. Um, there's, there's a couple shows every year that are gonna be, you know, the ones that stay in your calendar, but there's also, you know, more than half the shows kind of roll off every year, you kind of see how, how it's going. This one for us is, um, this is going to be a mainstay for us. As long as we're doing it, we're going to be here. Uh, as far as the cannabis shows go, um, you know, this this is overall offers the the best opportunity. So um, yeah, we, we're, we're thrilled to the turnout this year, and uh, you know, we'll be we'll be exhibiting for the next uh, you know until they don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, for people who want to learn a little bit more about OMI Industries, how can they do that? Where are you at? Yeah, uh, EcosorbIndustrial.com. Pop that into Google, so that's our industrial side, and then Cannabolish is the name of the consumer product. Cannabolish.com. Uh, we sell it on Amazon as well, and again, just plant-based. Um, you know, if you want to smoke, like I said, your wife doesn't like it. Well, maybe you know something you can kind of spray your clothes down a after you smoke, and uh, um, whether it's in your car or you know wherever it is, uh, it, it doesn't leave behind. A, it's not like the old days of Febreze. You know, mm -hmm. spray it in the air, and all of a sudden you have some like flowery, perfumey smell. Now it just eliminates it completely. So um, cannabosch.com for that. And uh, again, yeah, Ecosorb Industrial for um, our industrial side. Do you have Nag Champa as a flavor? No, we don't. No, no, we don't have that, but uh, I'll, I'll send that over to the R&D team. <laughs> All right, sounds good, man. All right, I think with that, we're gonna have to roll this one up. So I wanna thank my guest, Tim Coffey with OMI Industries. Tim, thanks again for being on The Talking Hedge. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have I'm Josh Kincaid, this is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. Cannabis Health Radio is a podcast about stories from people around the world who have used cannabis to deal with serious ailments, many of them life-threatening. My name is Ian Jessup. My co-host, Corey Yelland, is no stranger to the devastating emotional impact faced by so many people receiving a death sentence diagnosis from a doctor. Told she only had months to live with anal canal cancer, Corey researched and immediately began using cannabis oil to eliminate her cancer and has been cancer-free for more than a decade. She told herself that if it worked, she would spend the rest of her life helping others, which she does tirelessly every day. When you listen to our podcast, you'll hear many stories like Corey's, along with others who have used cannabis oil for many more ailments besides cancer, such as chronic pain, PTSD, MS, and many, many more. As one of our guests said, your podcast gave me the confidence to save my own life. We regularly get messages from listeners who have heard our podcast and use cannabis to solve a serious health issue of their own or that of a loved one. We hope you listen to these stories and be as inspired and moved as we are with each and every episode.